All right. I'm gonna hit it right here. Peterbilt traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankees on the roll, 2-6. Peterbilt traffic, the X-ray Yankee Papa is just touching down, 3-1. Touching down. Yes, sir. Now that's a sweet one, huh? Yeah. So this aircraft's, uh, we obviously have different climb speeds we can do. We have a VX and VY. I don't know if you remember that from the from your days of flying. Nope. But for all intents and purposes, I like to train people to fly out with this aircraft at 65. If we keep it at 65, we're not going to have any surprises. We're not going too slow. Anywhere between 60 and 65. So there's our airspeed indicator. Right. I could go as slow as 58, but why bother? I'm in no rush to climb. And at that point, you're teasing slow flights and you have a nose up attitude. So you could be in an aggravated situation where you can get yourself in trouble. Right. Uh, just carry a little more speed for safety. Approaching altitude. That just means we're coming up upon 1,000 feet over the ground. Uh, I just set that little blue indicator there because that is circuit height at the airport for doing our traffic pattern. Okay. Uh, I'll move that throughout the flight. Generally, I'll set that little bug based on whatever altitude, altitude we choose to fly around at. And you'll hear her talk if we veer off it by 100 feet. Oh, okay. So she'll let you know you're either approaching or leaving altitude. Right. I found it was a lot nicer than listening to my voice. I'm surprised the air is fairly smooth up here. I'm shocked as well. This morning it was actually rough. I was doing some flying um, at a different airport uh, in a client's airplane and it was turbulent. Hmm. We'll get us to 2,500, and you can decide what direction you want to go, if there's any particular sights you'd like to see while we're flying. No, not necessarily. Okay. What I'm doing right now is that I'm just trimming the aircraft. The trim on this thing is electronic. It's on the stick. Yeah. We have a nose down button and a nose up button. Right. It's so accurate that you just want to tap it if you need to. Mm -hmm. I got it pretty set right now. She's flying pretty level. Mm -hmm. one, one little tap up. I was going to ask where the trim wheel is. <laughs> yeah. All modern stuff. Servos. And like I said, knock on wood, none of this stuff has ever failed on me. But even if your trim failed, it's not the end of the world. No. It would just be an annoyance. There's those thermals. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take this plane. I'm just going to do a right turn here, bring us towards the beach. At least there we can be almost guaranteed some smooth air. I'll make a radio announcement to Eden Vale there. Eden Vale traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankees, clear your zone to the west, 2,500 feet. On route to Wasega Beach, just over top of the, the Super Center. All right, so if you want to put your left hand on that control stick and I could just walk you through a couple of motions. I'm sure you're probably familiar with them, but I want you to feel how touchy this aircraft is with the stick. Right. So I'm just going to do a right turn with you. I'm just going to bring this stick to the right. That's all it took. Wow. Just a little, little tiny tug. See how the roll's getting steeper, right? Yeah. So there's the thermals. We're just going to pull her back. And there's our level almost, and we'll bring her left. Bring her 
back. Notice those control motions are really smooth. We're yeah. barely, barely tugging on that thing. Obviously, the slower we go, the more deflection you will make on this stick. But we're traveling relatively quick, you know, almost 80 knots or so. So the, the controls end up being tighter. And uh, I'm sure you remember to go up. We just give it a gentle pull back. You'll see this nose start climbing. We have confirmation by seeing our altimeter in a climb. Right. Our vertical speed indicator showing that we're in a climb. I wonder if that's that gentleman right there. So he's at 3,000. We're not going to go to three. Uh, that guy's going in this direction. So maybe we'll go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to you. I find it's best that if you just play with the control stick, you will figure it out easier than me describing things to you. Okay. So you have control of the aircraft. I'll just mine the throttle for now. Okay. And once you feel comfortable with the stick, we can transit you to the throttle. Okay. I have control. You have control. Yeah, that is sensitive. Yes, sir. Thing on the weekends to always look for is other aircrafts. Uh, Lima, five miles to the uh, south. Uh, 2,600 to 2,000, crossing overhead and joining, going back to 3 1. Alright, so what they're referring to, these guys, yep. are the airport that's right off our left here, okay. that's Collingwood. So we don't want to get too close to the zone of that airport because there's going to be a traffic pattern that's going and a lot of people coming and going. Right. But we're up nice and high right now. Got that one, this is Scott Evans, Saga Beach Unicom. I am sure you are clear to drop. Clear to drop, Scott Evans. So what I always stress when it comes to um, any aircraft, the most important instrument is this one. Yes. Number one is your airspeed. Yep. Your airspeed's fine and far out of the envelope of stall areas or slow flight. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be surprised with anything crazy. Uh, you're going to be you're going to be safe. Next one, of course, is this. This is good, so we know what altitude we're at, our altimeter. Right. So we can broadcast to other pilots where we are, what we're doing, and so we avoid each other. Right. So a well-calibrated altimeter is really good to have, so always calibrate before leaving the ground. And you probably may remember that altimeters will change based on barometric pressure. Yes. So every morning when you go out to your aircraft, it's odds are it's going to be different. So we always have to reset and calibrate that altimeter through the use of this little guy right here called the Colesman window. Right. On this aircraft, because it's digital, we don't have a dial here. We do it with this stick here. Okay. We use it like a joystick. We push like this and go to barrel. Once you get to barrel, you turn the knob, it'll change those numbers. Okay. But I calibrated that on the ground when we heard the AWOS report that number to us. Yes. So since not all airports will have an AWOS, you will just set it based on the published elevation of the airport. Right. The Rotax engine um, operates, obviously, it turns at a lot faster speed than the Continentals or the Lycomings. So uh, you'll notice our RPMs are 4,900. Now, if we were in a Cessna, you'd be having a heart attack seeing that kind of number. <laughs> In this uh, particular airplane, that is completely normal. It has published RPMs that are acceptable right here, in case you forget what they are. Right. So max continuous is 5,500. I never run it up to that. Right. Because that is that is some pretty heavy duty RPMs. I'll use that for takeoff. Right. I never get into the 5,800 range. Uh, for cruising this aircraft, I find it loves to cruise around between 4,600 and 5,000 RPM. <laughs> So whenever generally the flight instructor will say set your plane up for cruise, you'll just set your dial 
jump in between 46 and 5,000, okay. depending on the, how smooth the air is. Right. So right now that the air is smooth, we can be way up at the 5,000 range. Right. If it starts getting turbulent, common sense, we just back it down. True. So we're clear from that airport. Feel free if you want to turn the aircraft around. Uh, the only thing I could stress before doing any turn is make sure you clear it visually, that there's no aircraft that we're going to steer into. Right. So since we have a bubble canopy and we're a low-wing aircraft, all we have to do is just rotate our head all the way around. Right. With the high-wing aircraft, we're supposed to do turns and check everywhere. Yes. We can get away with not doing that in this plane. Right. I'm not going to bother with rudder, I guess. Well, you can. If, if you remember it, feel free to do it. You'll notice that this aircraft is not a rudder-dominant aircraft. It's very forgiving in that sense. Our rudder is relatively small here. Yeah. Now, if you want to see what your tail is doing, of course, your ball is right there. Yeah. So, if you remember, the way you straighten your ball is step on the ball. Right. If the ball hangs to the left, that means our tail is drooping left, which will tend to happen in a left turn. So we just step on the ball a bit to lift that tail up. Right. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's not moving her at all. Yeah. We're just off Woodland Beach, following the shoreline inbound for Collingwood. Unless you get into some aggressive, like really aggressive steep turns, yep. this plane doesn't need much rudder inputs. Nice. You're a great control of this thing. You didn't lose much skill at all. Well, it's kind of like riding a bike, but got that right. You need to uh, make sure you remember. Yeah. Certainly the gauge part of it. But. Yeah. And set your sight picture for horizon and try to yes feel what level feels like again. Calling with traffic, it's Bonanza, Charlie Golf, Bravo, Charlie Hotel, nine miles to the south, planning to enter a left downwind for runway 31, Bravo, Charlie Hotel, five minutes out. Now, as far as performance, what is this aircraft capable of? I remember doing uh, maneuvers in the Cessna uh, stalls. Very, very similar. Um, the wing, <laughs> the published wing stats on this thing are plus six, negative four. Wow. Um, I would never do that. <laughs> I don't know if that's the factory trying to brag and show off. Yeah. I, like I said, I just wouldn't do that. Right. I like to stay within the <laughs> plus four, <laughs> negative two. However, even then I don't even like to do that because what's the point? I'm not hot dogging. I'm here to teach people how to fly. And if you're flying like that, you're not safe flying unless you're an aerobatic pilot. Right. And for that case, I would say go to an aerobatic school and let them teach you that. Sure. But become a pilot first. Learn how to fly safely and learn all the laws and radio communications and navigation with a regular school. Yeah, good stuff. So we just wind that back. That's it. And if you want to get into doing that kind of G-Force stuff, there's a few guys out there that'll teach you. Yeah, well, not right away. Exactly. Well, that's good. You learn how to see how the throttle works. It's yeah. fairly simple. Uh, the vernier controller gives us two options. We can use it as a dial, as micro adjusting, mm -hmm. or we can do quick adjustments by squeezing the lock ball and pushing in or out. If you don't squeeze the ball, it won't move, or if it does, you're going to be grinding through it. Right. And it'll warn you, like, don't do that. Right. Over the water tower, we're 5,700 descending northeast along the shore. We're going to be uh, heading towards East Bell once we get down the port. And calling with traffic, helicopter Gulf Lincoln from Romeo 3.5 to the east, presently at 1,700. We'll be passing north of the field, setting up landing base of the ski club, Mike Uniform Romeo. I'm so used to looking around for other aircraft that I know. I'm paranoid, I guess. Where were you doing your flight training before? I did most of it out of Brampton. Oh, yeah. A little bit out of Burlington. Yeah, so they're busy. Yeah, they were. Very busy. 
Well, you're doing the right thing. We still got to look for traffic. It's just it's not. Uh, it's more sparse here, right? Yeah. Now, Collingwood tends to be a very busy airport because they have a very successful big flight school there, Genesis. Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of training flights out of there. Right. But right now, we're safely above their circuit height. We're at 3,200 feet and change. We're not quite in their zone because their zone is a five mile radius, yep. but that starts in the center of the field. Right. So that's 2.5 miles out in each direction, and we're right about on that area now. And calling with traffic, helicopter called Flank Uniform Romeo is 1.6 to the uh, northeast. Presently at 1,600, we'll be setting up uh, to land base the ski club, Flank Uniform Romeo. So this guy. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm going to beat you there or not, Bravo Charlie Hotel. Is directly below us, but at 1,600 feet. Okay, let me know when you're down. I'll slow up here. So see what's going on here? Our RPMs are starting to drop a little bit. That's just because wind or air has changed a little bit, so we just got to play with it and add a little bit more power. Setting down 4 if not, we'll end up, you'll feel that nose starts coming up, right? right. We start almost that slow okay, flight characteristics where we're kind of plowing. Yep. Beyond the departure end of 31, uh, I'll be a beam at the departure end of 31 in about 20 seconds. Yeah, Mike Uniform Romeo, I've got you in sight. Uh, no problem, have a nice flight. You too, sir. I'm just going to make a radio transmission so these guys know where we are. Sure. Traffic support starting via Julia Kilo Yankees just north of the field over the shoreline, traveling north eastbound along the beach, 3,300 feet. And calling with traffic, Bravo Shelly Hotel now beam the departure into 31, left downwind landing 31, calling with. Just like a bicycle. You'll notice also in this aircraft we don't have a mi mixture, sh mixture screw on it. Right. Unnecessary for the Rotax. Fuel uh, injected? This is actually carb, but they uh, managed to pull off a system where you don't need that. Oh. This aircraft is capable of going up to 13,500. Wow. Mind you, I don't do it because you got to bring oxygen with you. Sure. It gets expensive on gas climbing that high. Yep. And any time I've te teased those upper air, it's my luck. It's always been real nasty winds. Plus, I enjoy looking at the sights. And when you get up too high, you kind of lose that. You don't recognize many things on the ground anymore. Right. But right ahead of us, off to the right, you see there's a big, sort of like a grass field in the middle of the forest? Yep. We have to avoid that because that's where they're doing the skydiving. Oh, okay. As long as we stay out over here. Yep. I just want to call the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Left base, 3 1 landing, Collingwood. There you go. So you got the hang of this. Amphib Kilo Aqualima is at uh, 2,200, three miles north of the field, crossing over the shoreline. We'll cross overhead, join mid left downwind, 3 1 full stop. So it's pretty safe to say I hate jumping the gun like this, but I, I'm going to make the call right now that you're the type of person that is probably not going to take 25 hours to get a license. Well, that's good. We're up on an intro flight, you're controlling the throttle, you understand it. Yep. Some of this stuff obviously is coming back to you. Sure. Your altitudes you've been holding pretty darn good. You're not drifting all over the sky. Yep. You have a watchful eye on the sky. You know, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd be in that 25-hour club at all. Right. Oh, that's good. Um, as long as you have a good, you start developing a good comprehension of traffic patterns like the circuit, oh, traffic, uh, airport uh, procedures, zero one, uh, navigation, up. like I don't know where your skills are on that stuff, Right. but I find generally it takes me 10 hours to teach somebody to fly this plane like, like nobody's business. Oh really? And then the rest of the time is learning all the procedures and navigation and all that other stuff. Right. So you might be a 15 hour guy. Right. Yeah, it's hard to say. 
really. I mean, yeah, I might be comfortable with straight and level flight, doing yeah. some basic maneuvers, but. Well, of course, yeah. We start layering on stuff. You know, we get into steep turns and climbing turns and yeah. engine off procedures and all that good stuff, emergency landings, but. Bravo Charlie Hotel is clear of the active runway calling with taxiing to the Uber. If you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate to ask. There's another aircraft, you see him? Yep. Now he's turning towards us. Yep. So we could do one of two things. We can climb. All right, so now he's coming right. Let's go left. Because I don't think he's seen us. Okay. Just by the way he's flying, yeah, he did not see us. Right. Traffic, flash track, kilo tango, on down, left downwind, runway 34. Touch and go. Aircraft on uh, downwind uh, 431, calling with, uh, what's your position of the downwind? I actually enjoy a little bit of bumpiness. All right, so if you want to do that, let's go in land then. Let's head towards, see that little lake over there? Or lake? We'll go towards there. Because out here, it's, yeah. you know, the, the water's absorbing that sun. Right. Might as well throw you back into the fire, right? Yeah, why not? People think I'm crazy when I tell them I like the bumpiness. They go up <laughs> anywhere we're flying, and I'm like, I hope it's a rough flight. <laughs> I don't know, some days though, it gets a little too crazy. <laughs> yeah. Even the strongest of stomachs, it'll just rattle your nerves or just get on your pace like an annoyance. Yeah. Well, the only thing that really bothered me was a lot of spins. Yeah. That's when I really started getting wound up. Well, the good thing about Ultra is we're not required nor allowed to demonstrate spins. Oh, wow. So we're allowed to take you to the point of where a spin entry can happen yep. and talk you through how to get out of one if it happens. Okay. But we are no longer allowed to do them. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. I've read a bunch of literature on it and it looks like there's different opinions. Mm -hmm. But I think they say if your pilots are getting into spins, then you didn't teach them how to be safe pilots. Uh, it really comes down to that because... I'm sure anything could happen, but honestly, you got to have a calamity of errors for a spin to happen inadvertently. Yeah. you got to be not paying attention to your airspeed, not paying attention to your bank angle. You probably have no visibility, so you shouldn't have been flying. Right. Like, there's a million things that would have built up to that thing. Yep. That uh, those safeties should have cut you off before it even happened. Right. And I'll tell you, all the years I've been flying, I have never entered into a spin that I didn't want to go into. Right. There's our thermal starting to come and play. Yeah. Fox track kilo tango on final runway 3 floor, touch and go. Call the traffic and tip kilo echo lima turning left base 3 1, full stop. Leaving altitude. Ah, don't worry about her. I'll set her for 3,000. So this airspace, the only general threat I find right in this area is that airport right there. That's Midland Huronia Airport. Okay. We are on their frequency already. It yep. shares the same frequency as Collingwood. Oh. So when I'm in this area, I just leave it on this station, 122.85. Oh, okay. Until we get in the vicinity of Edenvale, where I switch to their frequency. Right. And so far, I haven't turned any mid-lift transmissions. Right down here is the little town of Elmvale. Collingwood again, fifth kilo echo lima, turning final, three one, full stop. Call 
Collingwood area, traffic is at 7172 Foxtrot Uniform, Echo Whiskey, 5 miles south of the Midland VOR, uh, we'll be uh, passing overhead the Midland VOR uh, with a hold and then uh, doing a simulated VOR DME Alpha approach into Collingwood. Uniform Echo Whiskey, I call Collingwood traffic. So the Midland VOR is right over here. Okay. One of these farmers, I can see the VOR right now. Uh, he said he was five miles, but going towards Collingwood. Hmm. So really there shouldn't be a conflict unless we fly south. Right. If we stay in this pocket, we're good, but we can still fly south and announce our intentions. That's fine. Okay. The sky is yours. You decide where you want to go. And like I said, the purpose of this flight is to let you see how comfortable you are in this type of aircraft. Well, I got to say, it feels pretty good. Doesn't it? I fell in love with this this type when I started flying it. First few minutes, I was uh, that way. Yeah. Straight up. Yes, sir. That's him. Or is that a bird? That's a that bird. Could be a bird. Closer than it looks. So that being the case, we don't want to fly underneath that bird. No. Nope. Because they tend to dive when they panic. probably far enough away from him that he's, oh yeah, there's two birds, two hawks. Oh yeah. Yeah, pilot's best friend. <laughs> I was actually looking to buy a cottage on our lake. Oh yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. No. A little more than I want to spend. Yeah, the market's pretty hot right now. Yeah. I think it'll come down. Give it a few years. There's some thermals. Yeah. That cloud there. Yes, sir. Yeah, the clouds with the dark bellies will give you that. Yeah. Leaving altitude. Bit of the traffic, flash rock, kilo tango, left down, wind, runway 34, touch and go. Right now, I can feel that thermal just lifting you. Yep. Yeah, it's picked you up almost 300 feet. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, we'll go around that cloud. Yeah. Stay in the middle here somewhere. So directly in front of us, if you can see where that's Lake Simcoe. Yep. There's the north end with Aurelia right over there, okay. sort of where the lake kind of peters off. Yep. The lake in front of us lake is Lake Kuchichig. Okay. Uh, off to our left, you'll see a white water tower over there. That is Victoria Harbor. Just giving you an idea of where everything is there. Okay. Yeah, this is obviously all new to me being up here. I'm sure. And knowing where everything is. Yep. Everything feeling good so far? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, really good. Confidence feels good. Yeah. Nice. That's so important. You want to feel good, you want to be well rested, and you want that confidence level to be there. Yeah. That way the the whole experience the is absorbed. Process. Yeah, for sure. No turning final, runway 34, set to go. Yeah. Yeah. Altitude. Yeah, the one really good thing too about these light sports or ultralight, advanced ultralights, they're 
affordable, relatively affordable. Traffic helicopter, Fox Truck, healing you from Romeo, five miles. I've seen south, sports south, stars south, with high hours, analog traffic gauges traffic go as low as 38,000. Wow. And, uh, you know, that was a high hour one, but I've also seen the average like 55 to 65,000 with analog. Huh. Not the end of the world, you know? It's like it's like buying a bike and a snowmobile. Sure. And what's the maintenance cost like? Uh, obviously, it depends on how hard you are on the thing, but uh, every 50 hours, you have to do an oil change. Yeah. Three liters of oil, it's not that pricey, you know, 20 bucks a liter or so. Yeah. Uh, your oil filter, so like $100, $100 every oil change, no oh. big deal. But that's 50 hours. And you're allowed to do that yourself? You can do it yourself because it's in the ultralight category. Nice. Very, very straightforward, the oil changes. Um, I would always recommend if somebody buys a 912, buy the Rotax manual for 100 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. And it walks you through step by step, like putting together Chinese furniture. Right. How to do it. Everything is turn this screw left three turns, take it out. <laughs> Simple stuff. Buy a torque wrench. Yeah. You know, very, very simple instructions. Anybody can do it if they follow it. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, um, oil changes are going to be obviously your most frequent thing. Tire checks, your, you know, basic stuff like that. Yeah. Some people aren't comfortable doing it themselves, so they'll pay a mechanic to do it. It's all up to your ability, right? Right. Every 250 hours, generally, you'll do a very thorough inspection of the aircraft. Yeah. It'll be a very set checklist, like check this bolt, check the torque on it. Yep. Um, you know, just take off this fairing and look in here, look for wear, look for debris, look for this. Yep. Grease this fitting. Very, very simple, simple stuff if you follow the list. Generally, when it comes maintenance time for myself, I will get a friend, make a day out of it, and have fun with it, right? Sure. Turn up, turn up the radio in the shop and uh, and just go away with the whole checklist, get her all done. Yeah. Well, I'm a licensed tech, so... Exactly. So to you, it would be no big deal. No big deal at all. Now, that's also talking about sports stars. I've seen planes... Approaching altitude. ...go as low as 25,000 with the Rotax 912. So generally what you're doing is you're paying for the engine, you're getting a free plane. Right. Because the engines never usually drop below 20 or 25,000. Hmm. Unless it has a crazy amount of hours on it. Yep. The engine has to be rebuilt by the factory at 2,000 hours for it to be certified. over and we'll be in the area 2.3. So that's the only drawback, and the rebuild cost from the last I checked was around 10000 Right. But really what they do is give you a new engine. <laughs> yeah. You send it in, they send you a new one that's already done. Right. They just use the recore. Yeah. And calling with traffic, uh, this is helicopter Fox Shark Helium from Romeo. We're just landing 3-1, so we um, just want to hold short. There's some good thermals, huh? Yeah. So the reason why we're feeling them more here is because the, the land grade has came up here. Yeah. The ground is closer to us in this area, close to Aurelia. Oh, just bring it up a hundred feet or so. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a turn back in towards the direction we came from. Sure. Which is where? <laughs> it's going to be that direction. Okay. But you're five o'clock. That's a great power application on the turn. Collingwood area traffic, uh, Cessna 172, Fox Trot, Uniform Echo Whiskey, just uh, uh, doing simulated uh, holds at the Midland uh, VOR as per uh, public school procedure. Uniform Echo Whiskey at Midland. All right, so that guy is doing a hold procedure over the Midland VOR. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a conflict if we keep it wide and come this way. Right. Yeah, just play with that throttle. So right off our right wing here is Mount St. Louis Moonstone. Yeah. So this is Highway 400. Yep. So 
That would put Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort sort of right over here. Okay. You can almost see how the ground does that little dip and drop. Yeah. That's the Horseshoe Valley there, that big dip. Okay. Another very, very busy airport that's directly at our like 11.30 direction over there. That's, yeah, that one up there? Yeah, Lake Simcoe Regional Airport. Okay. We are not on their frequency right now because I still find that most traffic in the area will be on this. Okay. Unless we get any closer to it, I won't switch over to that frequency. Right. is a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be today. No kidding. I thought we were going to get the crap kicked out of <laughs> us up here. Yeah, this is like a three on a scale of one to ten of how bad it can get. Yeah. I thought it was going to be an eight today. <laughs> out of our seats, side to side, all that good stuff. Well, I was watching those clouds come in when I was on the way up, and yeah, I yeah. <laughs> thought it was going to be fun. Yeah, once you see that cauliflower, cauliflower look at the top, yeah. it starts a little bit of a warning to the pilots. Yeah. So do you remember much about the circuit for coming to land? I do, yes. What I'm going to do is I am going to show you a little cheat sheet of what it looks like. Right. Just just to refresh your memory. Yeah. So there's our runway. Yep. And 90% of airports, your circuits are flowing with left turns. So we do left turns in the circuit. Right. Everything here is left, 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 left. Unless the airport publishes that they have right circuits, that's the only time we do a right-hand turning circuit. Okay. Um, not too many, like I said, not too many airports have it. Barrie Executive Airport, which is a little airport right inside the town of Barrie, has one that has a right circuit on one runway. When I do flight training with people, I always bring them over there to get used to doing right turns in the circuit, but other than that, it's rare. Owen Sound has a right circuit, I think. And I think Lindsay as well. But everything else, this airport's all left. This one over here is left, Midland, Collingwood's left, Edenvale's left. So, eventually when we go to land, I'm assuming they're still using runway 31. Right. We don't know that yet, but I will switch it to their frequency when we're when it's time for us to come and land. Okay. So this is Horseshoe Valley Road here. Yep. If we maintain this street right That's here, we will end up directly at Edenvale Airport. Oh. Good guess. <laughs> it is a good guess. Now we've still got about 20 oh, minutes. Right. Front got six golf whiskey approaching from the south. We'll overfly to join a mid left downwind for one three Collingwood. So since that's the case, this is what the airport's going to look like to us when we get there. It's actually going to be a little bit like that, angled like that. Okay. So we're going to be one of these guys coming in from this side here. We're okay. on the upwind side, which is also called the dead side. Right. As long as we descend to circuit height before we get within a 2.5 mile from the center of the field, yep. we're following the rules, so we're gonna descend down on this side, uh -huh. enter circuit height, cross overhead, get to here, cross directly overhead the field, like on this little road, yep. and join a mid-left downwind, and do a base and final. Thank you. Silver clear view field. So it will be on an angle like that, because the runway 31 is that way, like this. Right. I found when I was doing my initial stages of training years ago, this little kind of card just helps. Yes. Because when you're flying to a strange airport, you got all these numbers in your head, 3112608. Hey, just show me on the card. Okay. <laughs> 31 is going to be like this. I can look at my compass yep. and just figure, okay, I'll turn it like that. That should be roughly 31. Right. So the one that's pointed that way is 31. Yeah. And then you could easily figure out how you're entering. Approaching altitude. Right.
Gonna get a little bumpy up here. Ooh, yes, sir. Altitude. Calling with traffic, Foxtrot Victor Golf. Whiskey is overhead the field to join a mid left down wind, one three full stop. So well, that's interesting. And, uh, calling with you, Another one three. Calling with he's using one three. Calling with Glass one three. So I'm curious to see if Eden Vale's yeah. using one three. I'm going to switch Thank to Eden Vale just so we can listen. We're and we're on Eden Vale, and we'll hope to hear traffic there. Yeah. Now, according to the computer in this plane. Altitude. The winds up here are blowing in this direction, so that would put a setup for a 1-3 landing. Eight mile traffic, yes. uh, system 150, Tango Romeo Juliet, 2,500 feet, uh, currently over her uh, overhead, uh, Midhurst inbound for landing. Midhurst. Uh-huh. So he is, uh, should be right over here at 2,500. We're at 3,000. So if we maintain where we are, we shouldn't have any conflicts. Okay. So hard to see them. Yeah. And you don't want to get caught up in freaking out looking for them because then you'll forget to fly the plane. Right. What I do to cross off those stress things, stress points in the pilot's mind is he said 2,500, we're at 3,000. So we already crossed one big bridge, we're 500 feet apart. Right. So even if we were right at the same place, we should have no issue. Right. Now the rest of the time we can just kind of keep flying the plane and we'll just peruse and look for them. Leaving altitude. And Scott, I want Tango Romeo Juliet, uh, is this, uh, 260 active at the email today? Yeah, you guys use 2631, I'd recommend 31. So they're All using right, 3 1. Girl, three one. We'll go for three one. So we still got time. If you want to try turning this plane a little sharper, let's uh, let's play with it. Well, why don't you show me a little bit of what it'll do? What, what it can do? Yeah, well, not what it can do. Don't throw us upside no, down. No, I don't obviously. want to do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll give you control. And okay. You maybe I have control. Okay. So, like I'm just saying, don't be afraid to take the aircraft and turn it and make sure everything's clear. Yep. I'm just going to do a right turn. I'm not, not, not hot dogging or nothing. I'm just. Doing a safe right turn. I'm applying a little bit of rudder. Well, it'll stand up pretty good. Oh yeah, no, she'll stand right up if I have to. Wow. Well, gonna have one burning the zone to the north, coming up to the drop zone 3100, continuing the climb along the shore. Give her a left. So that was standing up there. Altitude. Yeah. I guess I still have at the back of my mind, back in the day, ultralights, they wouldn't take a whole lot. Oh no, this will take it. No. In Italy, they do they do stunts, they do this for aerobatics. Wow. In Italy, this exact plane. <laughs> You'll find videos online, if you just type in Sports Star Italy, there's yeah. a bunch of wackos there like doing hammerheads and silly things with this <laughs> thing. I would never do it, but... Right. Girl, meet you God later. bless them. Over, uh, menacing 2,500 feet and down for landing. So as long as you're not hammering the crap out of these rudders, yep. the plane is very, very forgiving. Leaving altitude. A little touch of a climb there I didn't want to do. Approaching a little bit altitude. of thermals makes it tricky, right? Yeah. That dark cloud right above us is being a pain. Yeah. Yeah, she'll turn. Yeah, I'd say. Wow. Uh, and another thing, of course, I always like to show people, just so they see how safe these aircraft are. Yep. Uh, slow this guy down. Idle. Total idle. Yep. Glide speed on this aircraft is 58 knots, so I'm just pulling back on the stick to achieve 58. This wow. is actually lower than idle. I set it like this so I can really simulate engine failure without shutting the engine off. Right. So if we had an engine failure, this is our glide. Altitude. Right, we're going to make it like way out there. Yes, sir. So that's why th this thing is so darn safe. Yeah. So right now, yeah, we're picking fields. We're just looking for a nice spot to touch down. We have a lot of options from here. Now is that Edenvale straight ahead? Yes, sir.
Yeah, unfortunately we wouldn't make it that far, but still. No. Nice to know it's right there. So there's your glide speed on this thing. Wow. Sweet. Add a little bit of cruise power back. Bingo bango, if you want to take her again, you have control. Oh, it's up to you. You go ahead. All right. I'll just look around for a change. Well, uh, three miles to the uh, east of the field, we'll be over flying three one to join the left down for uh, the three one full stop tank. Okay, this guy's darn close to us. Somewhere. Three miles to the east. See, technically, we're, we're more like six miles. Yeah. Maybe seven from that airport. As long as he's correct on his three mile, we should have no conflict. Well, I'm not seeing him, so. No, sir. Oh, I have aircraft calling eight mil. You're unreadable there. So directly ahead of us, that's Barry. Oh. Oh, yeah. I recognize that now. Yeah, we cover a lot of ground in these things. Yeah. This is menacing. You would have drove right through here on the way. Yep. The gas station on the corner with the general store. Yep. So now in terms of rental, uh -huh. uh, what do they rent here at Eatonville? I don't know what anybody else does. My school, I rent this out to, of course, anybody who's checked out in it. Yeah. I rent this thing for 140 an hour wet. So that's, uh, you know, yep. of course, your fuel and all that stuff. Yep. What is the deal with that? What is that? Piece of plastic or something. Huh. Uh, the only other flight school that's at Edenvale is Barry Flying Club. I've never, I can't speak out of turn, I've never seen them rent their aircraft. Oh. I'm sure they do for solo flights for their students, but yep. uh, anybody else with private ownership, I'm not sure. I, I can only speak for what I do, so. Right. So anybody who can fly this thing has a rating for it. Yep. So if they even have their PPL or rec permit and they prove to me they can fly, we go out for a flight, I check them out in it. Mm -hmm. Then as long as we don't let too much time elapse, Meaning, I don't want, you know, don't call me a year from now and say, hey, I want to rent it for an hour. I want to check you out again. I know for each sure. and all. But, you know, if somebody comes out once every two months to fly it, that's fine. And, uh, book, book the plane and it's yours. Coaching nice. altitude. And, of course, another really cool thing about doing any forms of flight training or whatever out of a place like Eaton Vale is... The availability and quickness of ease getting off the runways yeah. and not wasting time and paying for time on the ground yep. is almost unheard of. Like, it's very rare that we're stuck on the runway waiting for traffic. Right. That happened a lot in Brampton. Exactly. Yeah, I tried doing some flight training before down in uh, Buttonville. Oh. And I swear, man, I was paying for an hour for 20 minutes in the air. Yeah. That's all I was getting. Yeah, that dark cloud right there is a bit of a pain. Uh -huh. Final for me one zero. It's good. It's gonna let loose soon. Yeah. So it's entirely up to you if you're gonna want to try to do this landing procedure. If not, I'm fine with doing it. It's up to you. Uh, no, I think I better let you do it. Okay. <laughs> not that I don't think I could attempt it, but yeah, well, better to be safe. All right. Well, you like the bumps, so I'm going to give you some bumps maybe <laughs> under this dark cloud. Yeah, you can almost feel right now my angle of attack is down. Yeah. But we're almost maintaining our, our altitude because of the thermal lifting us. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's about to go away. Yeah. <laughs> Approaching altitude. I can't believe how this thing is so much like the standard aircraft, but it's an ultralight. Wow. Yes, sir. 
So the thing that makes it an ultralight is the engineers designed it to have a stall speed no greater than 38 knots. Okay. If it was 39, it couldn't be an ultralight. So they would have had to do a lot of work to make it stall at that. Right. Uh, a lot of companies have that problem, meeting the ultralight requirements, because they want to build ultralights instead of general aviation aircraft. Sure. So, but uh, there's a few popular ones in the States that are having problems too because they're doing tests and finding out they're not truly 38 knots. Okay. They're like 42, 41. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, obviously, uh, in the U.S., your maximum takeoff weight is 1,320 pounds. In Canada, we're like 1,205. Huh. The same aircraft in the States is allowed to do another 100 pounds. Right. This Leaving altitude. Semantics, you know, regulations. Yeah. There we go. Let's see what this cloud's going to do to us. Oh, at least it's not so hot. No. And in all traffic, Tango Romeo Joy will be crossing runway 26 leave. I'm going to put out an announcement to Edenville right now. Edenville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee is four miles northeast of the field, 2,900. Descending to circuit height to cross overhead the field. Join the wind left down, wind 3 1. A little bit of rain coming there. A couple drops here. All right. Now, that's one thing in my 12 hours of seat time, I never did get radio certified. Really, huh? Yeah. I don't know why, but this never happened. You know what? A lot of people won't do it in 12, though. So don't, I wouldn't feel bad. A lot of people don't because you would spend the first 10 hours really trying to learn how to fly a plane and not. hopefully your instructor told you don't concentrate on the radio because we want to teach you the most important thing is fly. Yeah. Wow, another piece of debris. I don't know what the heck that was. Leaving altitude. I'm doing it. I'm slipping it. I'm yep. bringing it down in a slip. Yep. Set my altimeter bug here to 1700, which is circuit height. That's what my target is. Yep. Not getting too aggressive on the slip, just a little bit. Doesn't seem to be anybody else around either. No, sir. Not enough, except for those two guys that just landed. Now, do you have more bookings for today, or you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right after you, I got uh, got a guy that's coming right away, pretty much. Yeah, my weekends are usually really full. It was just a fluke that I was able to fit you in. Right. This morning, I was down in. Um, Oh, what's the name of the airport? I know the grass field. Past Mansfield. Uh, I, whatever. Yeah. Doing some training in this guy's plane. And then off to here with this guy, with this plane. And uh, you're my first here today. And then there's a guy right after you. And then altitude. three more after that. Yeah. Here we are. We're now at circuit height. So this is the proper entry to the circuit here. What I'm doing is just crossing midfield. Yep. Make a radio announcement right about here. Eater Bell traffic, Julia, Kilo Yankees overhead the field, two join up in left downwind, three one, full stop. Yeah, very, very dependable engines, these Rotax 912s. Yeah. Rotax has always made a good engine. Yep. So roughly three quarters of a mile from that field. I'm going to make my left turn into the left downwind. I'm going to make sure there's nobody coming straight in. Yep. Looks clear to me. Edenville traffic, Julia, Kilo Yankees turning mid left down the wind, 3 1, full stop. Being that we're in the circuit, I don't want to bank any greater than what I'm pretty much doing there because we're relatively low to the ground. Right. 
And if we ever got into a spin, we would be in big trouble. Yes. Oh, like 15 degrees max for banks in the circuit, I would say. Okay. But that goes for any plane, really. Like, anybody who pushes it greater than that, you're asking for trouble. Right. I got a big lift there from a thermal. Yeah. Now it just let us down. <laughs> that pushed me up 100 feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, these thermals really came out to play here. Yeah. I'll we'll come out a little bit further. Normally I would have already turned base, but I want to try to ride this out and play with the thermals on the way down, if you don't mind. Sure. Speed rail traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees, turning left base, 3 1, full stop. So the runway's clear. While we were in the downwind, I did a downwind check. I did, I'm so used to doing it, I just did it visually. I looked at my engine instruments, made yep. sure everything was in the green, making sure this was a landing that we want to make and not a landing we have to make. Right. Flap lever number one, I get used to the pressure on the stick. Flap lever number two, allow that nose to droop a bit, maintaining yep. 65. Begin with a little bit of left rudder, just a touch. Maintaining 65 for the turn. Eaterville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees turning final, 3-1. Had a bit of wind, just a touch of wind pushing me this way. Yep. Now it's lifting me up. I have no power on at all. There we go. So I didn't quite need to do any form of forward slip as of yet, and I don't think I'll need to. Looking pretty good. So far, so good. Now it's still a little high. So I may have to slip it a little bit here. All right, so I'm just going to employ a bit of a slip. I'm going to hit my right rudder down, left stick, a little bit more aggressive, get us down. Transitioning out of the slip, just flying the runway, letting the ground effect air take over. There's a little lift again. Nice hot runway. And on the throttle, in case Detail I have to give a full jab. One, we're 3,200, about five miles north. We're going to be uh, holding that nose up. Yep. Now cross no a little drop the on its own. That's right. Right now, this is helping bleed off the speed, so we're not killing our brakes. Yep. And if you remember, when you throw a nose wheel down on these tricycles, they tend to start doing this. Yeah, or vibrate. Exactly. So right now, I just want to hold it off as long as possible, and I can't do it anymore. Yeah. But right away, you notice how, how touchy the steering gets. It's... Yeah. Shimmy, 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 shake. Applying brakes, and now I'll just go full right rudder here. And I'll make a radio announcement. Edenville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee is clear of 3-1 on the backtrack, 2-6 to the apron. Perfect. So how was that? Very good. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. Edenville's got to have one, two and a half miles. I'm north. glad I could be a part of getting you back up in the air. Well, we don't know yet. Well, you were in the air today. That's all that matters. True. Hey, I, I never look for a commitment from anybody. Just, I'm glad I can show people the joys of flying. Yeah. Even if it's not something you want to do or for fully go through for certification, anytime you want to get up in the air, I do this. Like, I don't expect anybody to become a student. Right. Unlike some of the other flight schools, high pressure, no. Ugh. I set off to do this to bring joy, not stress. Right. 